President, Mr. President, why are you attacking Senator Obama and Senator Obama? I'm very unhappy that he didn't repeal and replace Obamacare, as you know. He campaigned on repealing and replacing Obamacare for years. And then he got to a vote and he said, thumbs down. And our country would have saved a trillion dollars and we would have had great health care. Uh, so he campaigned. He told us hours before that he was going to repeal and replace. And then for some reason, I think I understand the reason, he ended up going thumbs up. And frankly, had we even known that, I think we would have gotten a vote because we could have gotten somebody else. So I, did, I think that's disgraceful. Uh, plus, there are other things. I was never a fan of John McCain, and I never will be. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The President of the United States ending a conversation with the Brazilian President and reporters in the Oval Office uh, with a statement that will, again, um, open some eyes here in the United States. War hero, the late senator, Republican presidential nominee in 2008, John McCain, the president of the United States now, again criticizing John McCain for his vote against an Obamacare repeal and replace plan, taking some of the context of that vote out of context, uh, and then saying, I was never a fan of John McCain, I will never be a fan of John McCain. Other issues discussed with the Brazilian president, uh, trade, military to military relationships, what to do about Venezuela, both countries have an interest in that. But yet again, uh, after several weekend tweets attacking Senator McCain, the president there could have said, you know what, I'm done. I've said everything I want to say on the subject. Instead, again. Well, he, he's not one to not hold a grudge. Yeah. Um, okay. And j just because uh, Senator McCain has passed away, it's clear um, he's going to hold on to this grievance, no matter how um, inappropriate uh, it, it is, and just kind of random. Is it, a ref is, is it his reflex in who he is, or does he see some strategic value? He ran against the Republican establishment to become the nominee. He often now, as he gets closer to the reelection campaign, you could say we're early in it, seems again to be, you know, the I, I, I'm alone or I'm against them, they're fighting me. But he's a Vietnam POW, a war hero, yes, a somewhat he would say Maverick McCain called himself Republican, didn't give the president the vote he wanted. But what is, is there a strategic purpose or is this just impulse Trump? I think it's impulse Trump because there's no doubt that Trump has won that part of the battle. When you look at primary campaigns, if Donald Trump endorses you, you win the Republican, the Republican nomination. It's not that hard. It's just, it's like some sort of Shakespearean hold, like McCain's death just is still rattling around in Trump's brain. And he just can't get over the fact that McCain still just has this, this, this hold on him. I think we also have to pay attention to what else he said about McCain this weekend. He was tweeting about the Steele dossier, which he blames McCain yeah. for handing over to the FBI. Again, another case, forgive me for interrupting, yeah. where the president's facts and context just don't exactly. hold up. Exactly. Nope. However, nope. in the president's mind, the Steele dossier is the crux of this Russia investigation witch hunt. And so for, for the president, all of these things about John McCain are, are part of the reason why he can't let John McCain go. He can't let the health care vote go. He can't. Uh, let McCain go without blaming him for being a part of why the Russian investigation in his mind came into existence. Uh, and and even going back beyond that, I mean, I think this whole uh, Vietnam War thing, the fact that McCain was a celebrated veteran, a prisoner of war, a war hero, is something that bothers the president. Because as we all know, President Trump did not go to Vietnam. He was he got deferrals on multiple occasions. Anytime you talk about John McCain in one breath, when you say that, you talk about President Trump in the other breath, uh, saying saying that about him as well. And I think all of this uh, it really grates on his nerves, and he does not want to let McCain uh, be celebrated when people denigrate him. So uh, he has no care, really, obviously, for the McCain family. It's it's been less than seven months since John McCain was was buried. Uh, the president does not care about that. But I think overturning these conventions matter, right? It's not just don't speak ill of the dead. This is about civility and politics. This is about how the parties work together. This is about really the strength of democratic institutions, which is really does depend on Democrats and Republicans being able, theoretically, though we don't see it much, <laughs> to make deals with each other, right? And to find compromise. And behavior like this, it, it, this is why when people talk about uh, the demise of democratic institutions or fears of that demise in the U.S. It's little things like this that maybe just seem like he's flouting politeness and just being rude. But I think these things do have an impact on how our democracy runs.